In typical years, our undergraduate commencement is preceded by the baccalaureate ceremony at which we recognize the recipients of the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Medallion, one of the highest awards at the university. Because the class of 2020 had no baccalaureate, we will hear from these two recipients today. Washington and Lee presents the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award to the seniors who excel, quote, in high ideals of living, in fine spiritual qualities, and in generous and disinterested service to others. When the institution makes the student award, it appoints the recipient as its representative to bear its standard before the world. Today we confer the Algernon Sidney Sullivan Award upon Julio Hidalgo and Joel Simu. Julio majored in neuroscience and pursued academic interests in preventative medicine, human anatomy, and robotics. A Questbridge scholar, Julio was president of WNL's chapter of Alpha Epsilon Delta, the pre-health honor society, and co-president of Beta Beta Beta, the biological honor society. He co-founded the university's pre-health club and was a member of the robotics club. Also active in the local community, Julio was president of Catholic Campus Ministries a religious education teacher at St. Patrick's Catholic Church, a volunteer at Lexington's Carilion Hospital, and worked with Campus Kitchen. In his spare time, he was president of the Swing Dance Club. During the summer, prior to his first year at Washington and Lee, Julio worked on drone autonomy and computerized flight simulation with Professor Simon Levy as part of our advanced research cohort program. He spent two summers conducting research with Professor Fiona Watson on the mechanisms of central nervous system regeneration and the neurodevelopmental effects of pesticide exposure in frogs. Julio also spent a summer shadowing physicians in St. Louis, Missouri. He was a Howard Hughes Medical Institute undergraduate research fellow in 2017. Julio now attends medical school at Emory University. He hopes to participate in the Doctors Without Borders program to work with underserved populations. I now invite Julio to present a reading he has chosen to help us celebrate this occasion. Ulysses by Alfred Tennyson. Yet little profits that an idle king by the still hearth among these barren crags, matched with an aged wife, I meet and dull, unequal loss unto a savage race that horn and sleep and feed and know not me. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly, have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone, on shore, and went through scuttling drifts the rainy high at ease vex the dim sea. I am become a name, for always roaming with a hungry heart, uh, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments, myself not least, but honored of them all, and drunk the light of battle with my peers. I am a part of all that I have met, yet all experience as an archer throw gleams an unraveled world whose modern fades forever and forever when I move. How dull is it to pause, to make an end, to rust unburnished, not to shine in use, as though to breathe were life, life piled on life were all too little, and of one to me little remains, but every hour is saved from that eternal silence something more. I'm bringer of new things, and violet were for some three suns to soar and whore myself, and this gray spirit yearning to desire, to follow knowledge like a, sh like a sinking star beyond the utmost bound of human thought. This is my son, my own Telemachus, to whom I leave the scepter and the isle, well loved of me, discerning to fulfill this labor by slow prudence to make mild the rugged people, and through soft degrees subdue them to the useful and the good. Most blameless is he centered in the sphere of common duties, decent not to fail, in offices of tenderness and pay meet adoration to my household gods. When I am gone, he works his work, I mine. There lies the port, the vessel puffs her sails. There looms the dark, broad sea, my mariners, souls that have toiled and wrought and thought with me. You and, uh, forever with a frolic welcome took. The thunder and the sunshine opposed. Free hearts, free foreheads, you and I are old. 
Old age has, yeah, his honor and his, and his toil. Death closes all, but something ere the end, some work of noble note may yet be done, not on becoming men that strove with gods, the light being to twinkle from the rocks. The long day wanes, the slow moon climbs, the deep moans round with many voices. Come, my friends, it's not too late to seek a newer world. Push off, and sending well order smite, the sounding furrow, for my purpose holds the sail beyond the sunset. And hark off the western stars until I die. It may be that the ghost will wash us down. It may be we shall touch the happy isles and see the great Achilles whom we knew. Though much is taken, much abides. And though we are now not that strength which in old days moved earth and heaven, that which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts, made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. Thank you, Julio. Joelle was an English major with a special interest in legal studies and literature. She minored in Africana studies and poverty and human capability studies. A Questbridge scholar, she was active in WNL's student government, serving as the chair of the Student Judicial Council during her senior year, and as a representative to a wide range of committees and organizations, including the University Committee on Inclusiveness and Campus Climate, the First Generation and Low Income Working Group, the Student Affairs Committee, and the Africana Studies Advisory Committee. A peer counselor on campus, Joelle also volunteered in Lexington and Rockbridge County, working each week at the Community Table, an organization dedicated to relieving hunger in the local area, and serving as a student representative to CARE, the community anti-racism effort. In 2017, as a summer research scholar at WNL, Joelle worked on a project titled The Poetics and Politics of Space in the Works of Martin Luther King and Leopold Senghor, under the direction of Professor Mohamed Kamara. She participated in the university's Washington term in 2018, working as an internship at the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, a coalition that coordinates legislative advocacy for more than 200 national organizations. Joelle also had summer internships with the Center for New North Carolinians in Greensboro and the Brennan Center for Justice, a nonpartisan law and public policy institute affiliated with New York University Law School. In 2019, she received the G. Holbrook Barber Scholarship Award, awarded to a rising senior who manifests superior qualities of helpfulness and friendliness to fellow students, public spirit, scholarship, and personal character. Since graduation, Joelle has been working as a paralegal at Relman Colfax, a national civil rights firm in Washington, D.C. She plans to pursue graduate studies in law and literature next fall. I now invite Joelle to share the reading she has chosen for this occasion. Good morning, everyone. Um, today, I will be reading a poem titled Garden Lessons by Ed Bach Lee. Garden Lesson. A young child asks his mother, what happened to all their house plants as parents? Did she have to kill the mothers and fathers to take and pot their children? And if so, did they scream? He has kept silent all week during which his family has toured home after home in search of one they can finally live in. He has stared worldlessly in these houses for sale at the few living plants, each whispering, this too could happen to you. Abandoned, uprooted from somewhere far to end up here on a windowsill or a counter, hopelessly alone. It was the last trip to the garden store its greenhouse shelves crammed with plants and flowers, like sad animals at a zoo, that finally compelled the boy's need to know. What 
had happened to all the Plants' brothers and sisters and cousins and family members, surely still alive in the jungle or rainforest. The boy's mother, a refugee and immigrant, shakes a rinsed sprig of fresh basil at the sink and kneels to explain to her troubled son, we are houseplants and animals. And one day when it's time, forces will take each of us from our homes and families to live among others unlike us, in new towns, over rivers and mountains and seas, through decades of stories of who we once thought ourselves to be. This is why seeds endure and soil is everywhere. Of course, the boy doesn't understand. <laughs> the woman kisses him on the forehead, then sends him out to their apartment's vacant lot for some dandelion greens and perilla, lollygagging in a late summer breeze with the fennel and thyme. None has a clue of what is about to happen. Um, so I spent ha the better half of my senior year thinking a lot about what it means to belong, um, what it means to find community and home despite social and political forces that may contribute to feelings of instability. I thought a lot about rootedness. Um, and the pandemic hurled us into a world of unfamiliarity and brought about, for some, months of loneliness and isolation and grief. Um, and yet this reminder that no matter the chaos of the journey, this idea that we are seeds surrounded by soil that awaits our blooming is a joyful thought. Like seeds, we will be called into new communities and new spaces where we will seek to make our homes. This shared experience feels both rewarding and reassuring, even when we don't know when it will happen, even when we don't know that it is already happening. So class of 2020, like the resilient seeds that we are, I wish us all joyful bloomings as we continue to, com to come to know profoundly the truth of who we are and who we want to be. Thank you.